My name is Lee A. Burge, Jr., and I shot and killed a very close friend of mine. I, um, at the time when I did it, I believed that I was not even able to understand what it was to actually even take a life. Subsequently, I realized that with me being a child of someone who had got killed himself, I became the person that I grew up hating. As someone who was in foster care and constantly looking through foster home windows expecting my father who, who, um, who never came, I mean, I realized that I was the person who put somebody else's children in a foster home window waiting for a parent who couldn't come to come get them. I can remember the day being September 24th, 1993, and I can remember it was it was cool. I can remember standing in the housing complex. I can remember I can remember it just happening suddenly. Five shots later, five shots later, I'm sitting there, standing there, and I'm looking down at someone that I care for, and life is over. Life is over and he doesn't get a chance to recover. He doesn't get a chance to realize what he did wrong and fix it. He doesn't get a chance to sit here and say, okay, I realized that for whatever purpose I got, I got to a point where I, I was bad, I was wrong. However, I recovered and then now I help people. He doesn't get that. And no matter what the addiction is, you know, I used to early on in my addiction say, well, he was smoking crack, I was only smoking weed, so it was his fault. We both ended up in the same situation. And so whether I was using alcohol, whether I was popping perks, whether I was smoking weed, or uh, in his instance, I was smoking crack, either way, we both ended up in that same destination to be in that same situation, September 24th, 1993 at 5.43 p.m. Both of our addictions led us there. And because of both of our addictions, one person left the scene deceased, and the other person left the scene to now start a life that, I remember running away from the scene and just thinking, this is bad. This is bad. And as an 18-year-old who thought I knew what to do, nothing was the same. I, and I, I, I went on the run for like two days. And that whole 48 hours, if you will, I couldn't do anything but get high. I smoked weed, I drank, because I couldn't get the images out of my head. And I finally turned myself in on a Sunday. I remember when I left the scene of the crime, he was still breathing. Um, and I remember sitting in a hotel, and I remember, you know, just telling my age, but back then we didn't have cell phones. Um, and I remember using the hotel phone and calling the hospital. And I remember pretending like I was somebody else to get an update on them. And I can still hear the nurse say, and what I told her was I was flying in from out of town. You know, back then we didn't have caller ID. 
and I said I was flying in from out of town. And I remember the nurse saying, you don't have to rush. Um, even not knowing what it meant to take a life, at that moment I still felt a loss, if that makes sense. I didn't feel I didn't feel what I feel now as the person or the perpetrator. I felt a loss as a friend. So I didn't feel whatever emotions go along with, like the remorse as a perpetrator. I felt a thousand times worse because, again, like she said, you don't have to rush because that's it. So. Like I said, it took me about five years to, to feel what I needed to feel in order to be broken. It broke me, but at the same time, today as I sit here, I'm grateful for the breaking because that's what allowed me to actually be able to rebuild. And so people always ask me, why don't you how do you drive off for three hours of sleep? How do you just keep going throughout the day? And I tell them I have to, I owe, I owe, I owe because I took a life. I feel like every day I have to do enough good for two people. I, um, I don't take lightly the fact that because of me. I can say it's because I was the child of an addict. I can say it was because I was in foster care. I can say it was because I was abused. I can say it was because I'm the product of this, I'm the product of that. I can say that a thousand times, but it still does not give me the right to have taken a life, and it does, it's not easy. It doesn't, those things, those were rationales that I used during the trial. Those were things that I, for five years, I used to make, to disallow me to feel the pain, but So behind the smile, behind the everything that I do, they're still hurt. They're still hurt because I realize today because I think to myself, how would I feel if someone took Lil Lee from me? Mm-hmm. Mm. Oof.